Hello. Welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to place 3D objects into a footage with camera tracking in Blender. Let's get started the lecture. Let's add a new workspace. Click on the plus button, VFX, and choose motion tracking. Let's close the two windows at the top, we don't need them for now. Click on the open button, and import the footage. You can download the footage, and follow along the tutorial with me. I will share the download link in the description. First of all, let's adjust the frame rate of the scene in order to match our video clip. We can find out the footage frame rate in the right panel. If you don't see the right panel, you can press N key and open the right panel. In the footage tab, you can find out the frame rate of the footage. Our footage has 30 FPS frame rate. Click on the output properties tab and choose 30 FPS. Then we need to adjust the clip length. As you can see, our timeline has 250 frames length, but our footage has longer frame length. In order to find out how length the clip is, click on the set scene frames button. As you can see, our clip has 341 frames length. Before playing the clip, let's save it to memory cache to smooth playback. To do this, click on the prefetch button. Let's play the clip. It is time to add markers for the camera tracking. We need to choose the high contrast points as much as possible in the scene. So, Blender will be able to follow these markers frame by frame more easily. First of all, let's make tracking settings. Switch the motion model to perspective. This model is usually used to track a planar feature. Enable the normalize option. Expand the tracking extra settings section and set the correlation value to 0.9. To add a track in the scene, click on the add button, then click on the any point in the scene. Or, hold down control key and click on the any point. To delete these trackers, hit the A key and select all trackers and delete key. Now, we can add the trackers. We need to add 8 trackers at least in order to solve camera movements. We're gonna try to place these trackers to high contrast points on the floor. Let's determine a high contrast point on the floor and zoom in. Before adding the track, be sure that you are at first frame. Hold down control key and left click the mouse to add a track. We can also click on the track tab in the right panel and follow the tracking. This square is pattern size. It defines size of a newly created tracks. We can scale up or down the pattern size and change the shape if the tracking stops. If we press Alt S, we can see the search size. This is the search area for newly created tracks. We can also scale up and down the search size. If the tracking stops, we can scale up this box and resume tracking. We can also change the search and pattern sizes in the left panel. Now, be sure you are at first frame. Let's click on the track markers button and track this marker. As you can see, tracking has stopped at frame 124. In this case, we need to jump to previous frame by pressing left arrow key because the frame 123 is the last frame where tracking works. Let's scale up the search area size a little bit and press track button to continue again. It has stopped at frame 197 again, but the tracker already has disappeared in the footage. So it is okay. At the bottom window, we can see tracking graph. If the graph is so wavy, it means that the tracking is not successful so much. In this tracking, it seems good except some points. Let's add another track. Zoom in this high contrast point, hold down control and left click mouse. Click on the track button and start tracking. As you can see, tracking has stopped at frame 98. In this case, we need to jump to frame 97 by pressing left arrow key. 
let's scale up the search area size little bit, and press track button to continue again. Tracking has stopped again because the tracker already has disappeared in the footage. Hold shift and press left arrow key to jump back to frame 1. Let's add another track in the same way. The tracking has stopped at frame 163. Go back to frame 162, and scale up the search area. Click on the track button and continue. It has stopped at frame 311 again. Because the tracker already has disappeared in the footage. Jump back to frame 1, and add another track. We need at least 8 trackers. I will add another 5 tracks more in the same way. We have added all tracks. Now, let's play the clip, and see if they works or not. All tracks work properly. Ok. We have enough trackers in the scene, and ready to solve the camera movements. Let's click on the solve tab. Before clicking the solve camera motion button, we need to give some information to Blender about the camera we shot this footage. In the right panel, click on the track tab, and go to the camera section. You can click on the camera presets, and choose your camera if it is available in this list. If you know, you can enter your camera specifications, like sensor width, focal length and optical center. If you don't have any information about your camera, you can refine the focal length and optical center options in the left panel. So, Blender will try to estimate these values. We don't have any information about the camera that shot this footage. So, let's check these boxes. Keyframe A and B are a range where the camera moves suddenly and faster. If your camera motion is getting faster between these frames, you can enter these frames. In this footage, almost the camera motion is constant. So, I will enter first frame and end frame of the footage. But, all markers don't track along all footage. All of them almost track together until frame 180. So, let's set the keyframe B to 180. Now, let's click on the Solve Camera Motion button. So, Blender will try to calculate the camera movements in the 3D space. After the calculation, we can see average solve error up here, 0.32 pixel. That's good enough. If the solve error is under 1 pixel, it is considered good enough. It is time to make scene setups. Let's click on the Setup Tracking Scene. When we click this button, Blender will prepare scene for compositing 3D objects into this footage. Let's click on the layout workspace. As you can see, Blender adds a plane and cube to the scene. Also it adds two new collections as foreground and background. We can see them in the outliner editor. It also creates some nodes in compositing workspace. We will use them in shading later on. When we play the clip, you can see the camera moves based on the footage. Press numpad 0 and switch to camera view. As you can see, the camera perspective matches the footage. The footage is background here. When we play the clip again, 
you can see the objects don't stick to floor. They are floating around. We need to align the objects with the camera movements. To do that, click on the motion tracking tab again. We need to select three trackers on the floor. Hold down shift and select any three trackers on the floor. In the left panel, go to orientation section and click on the floor button. In this case, Blender will align the plane to floor. Let's go back to layout tab again. We still need to set scale. Go back to motion tracking tab, select any two trackers and click on the set scale button. Set the scale distance to 3. Go back to layout tab again. But, it still has no proper orientation. We need to set X and Y axis. To do that, select the camera and switch the pivot point to 3D cursor. Press R key, then Z key, and rotate the camera. You can adjust proper X and Y axis orientation. Let's play the clip and see how it works. It is cool. The objects stick to floor, and camera tracks them properly. Switch the pivot point to median point again. Now, let's add another 3D object instead of the cube. Let's go to the website, and download the potted plant model at 1K quality as Blender file. I will share the download link in the description. Let's import this model into Blender with a pen method. Firstly, select the cube and delete it. Go to File menu, click on the Append. Find the Blender file we have just downloaded. Select the file and click on the Append button. Scroll down to Object File, open the file and choose the potted plant objects. Click on the Append button. It has been imported. But we need to scale up enough to see. Hit the S key and scale up the model. Move the model on the Z-axis so that snap to the plane. Select all pars of the model, press Ctrl J and join them together. We can also move the objects wherever we want on the floor. To do that, select the pot and plane, hit the G key, then press Shift and Z key. So, we can move the objects on the X and Y axis except Z-axis. Select the plane and hide in the viewport for now. Let's play the clip. It works properly. We can move the pot on the y-axis little bit. Now, it is time to shading and rendering. Click on the Render Properties tab, and be sure that Cycles is Active Render Engine. Set the maximum samples number to 15 for faster render. Also disable Denoise option. We will denoise the render result in compositing section later on. So, we will be able to get faster render. Unhide the plane in the viewport again. Let's switch to Render Preview Mode. As you can see, we cannot see the video clip. In order to see, scroll down to Film section, and enable Transparent option. As you have noticed, we cannot see the plane. Because the plane is used as shadow catcher, and it is in different view layer. Let's switch the view layer to background. Now, we can see the pot shadow on this layer. Switch the view layer to foreground again. We can see both layers in render result. Go to Render menu and render image. We can also display both layers in the viewport. Just select the ground, and move to foreground collection. Now, let's adjust the shadow angle. Select the light, click on the object data properties tab. Switch the light type to sun, and set the strength value to 2. Set the angle value to 3. We can adjust the shadow direction based on the other objects in the scene. The problem is, the shadow looks so sharp. We will make the shadow soft in the compositing. Let's move the ground to background collection again. Firstly, 
let's get render image. Click on the output properties tab and set the resolution 720 pixel. So we can get faster render. Click on the render menu and render image. We need to denoise and make soft shadow in the compositing. Let's click on the compositing tab. If you want to zoom in the background, click on the view tab in the right panel and increase the zoom value. You can zoom out by decreasing zoom value. Also, you can move the background changing offset values. We can zoom in or out the nodes with mouse wheel. We can move the nodes holding down the mouse wheel. These nodes have been added automatically when we set tracking scene. There are three layers here. First one is movie clip layer. Second one is shadow layer. Third one is potted plant layer. Firstly, let's denoise the render result. Click on the view layer properties tab and enable the denoising data. Then let's add denoise node for the potted plant. Plug the denoising normal to normal, denoising albedo to albedo node. Press Shift D and duplicate the denoise node, and plug the denoise node for the shadow this time. We also need to make soft shadow for the potted plant. So, if we decrease the factor value of this alpha over node, the shadow will become softer. Let's set the factor value to 0.7. Now, let's get video render. Click on the output properties tab, scroll down to output section, and choose the folder you want to save your file. Select the file format as MPEG, select the container as MPEG4. Click on the render menu, and render animation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next tutorial.